Watford have sacked their manager and signed Claudio Ranieri. As a Fulham fan, Watford, I am worried for you. All my memories of Ranieri at Fulham are negative. So despite an okay start to the season, especially for a newly promoted club, we are getting ahead early and rebuilding Watford. I don't want you guys to go down. I don't know why. I have a bit of a soft spot for Watford. Maybe it's the Elton John effect. Sing us a song. You're the piano man. Oh, wait, no, that's Billy Joel. But today we're going to take over Watford and make them champions of Europe. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, fellas, if you are new around here for more terrible singing covers. But in reality, subscribe for more FIFA content. The objective of this series is to take a team to Champions League glory. All games barring the Champions League final will be simulated. The jump in feature cannot be used during simulations. And a warning, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. So this is our starting 11 to kick off life in charge of the Hornets. I don't know, it's an interesting one. Our front three is definitely quite decent. It's mainly getting rid of some of the older players, especially in our back line and a little bit of our midfield there. But definitely want to go in for a new center back, maybe a new center midfielder, left back, right back. I just want to revolutionize the entire back line here at Watford for season one. Wait a second. There's two of you. The first player departure here of the Mr. Rebuild era at Watford is going to be Craig Cathcart, the Northern Irish, almost said English, the Northern Irish defender is off to Syria. And Danny Rose is out of the club, the latest Englishman off to the Bundesliga. Meanwhile, Tom Cleverley is off to Granada. We've sold the English midfielder for three million pounds. It's all sales at the moment, lads, as Kiko Firmino is off to Crystal Palace. And our first signing in charge of Watford is going to be for the Hungarian defender Attila Saleh. He is going to join us here from the mighty Fenerbahce for 14.3 million pounds. Again, if you're over 30, 30 or over, this may as well be a retirement village for you. Christian Cavacete out of the club and a right back improvement here. Rasmus Christensen, the Danish right back, is going to join us from Salzburg for 12.5 mil. Ryan Sessegnon, Sessegnon, Ryan Sessegnon. Da, 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 da. I told you guys I was going to revolutionize this back line. Our fourth signing in the back for Oscar Mingueza. The Spanish center half is going to join us here from Barcelona. Some could say Watford is a more stable club right now than Barcelona. And that is saying a lot. But there we go, lads. We have come out of the gates absolutely firing here to kick off life in charge of Watford. Four big signings all in the defense. Hopefully this backbone can help us stay up in the Premier League this season. This is what the starting 11 looks like now. I have changed loser to a center attacking midfielder. Very interested to see how Saar, Hernandez, Dennis need to get these guys firing for us this season. Need the goals, need the defense strong. Essentially, if we're going to survive relegation this year, everybody needs to be on top of their game. So this is... This is a double-edged sword. So right now, if you said we'd be sitting 13th in the Premier League on the 1st of January, I would be a happy, happy man. But the thing is, we're on 20 points, Norwich are on 16. We're only four points safe from relegation. So despite being in a strong position on the table, points-wise, we need to do some work. So we are going to sell the Nigerian defender, William Troost Ikong, to Valencia. And the Swedish winger, Ken Seymour, is headed to PSV. Dan Gosling heading up to Sheffield, signing with the Blades for one point. 7 mil. If that's not the most Sheffield United signing, I don't know what is. And in response, we're going to make an upgrade to the midfield here. Kefren Thuram, the French defensive midfielder, going to convert him to a centre midfielder. We've spent 15.5 million pounds to get him across from Nice. Get in there, lads. We have survived relegation with an absolute breeze. 41 points. We finished 14th in the Premier League. Meanwhile, Manchester United are your Premier League champions here in season number one. Tottenham have won the FA Cup. What is in the water in North London? Tottenham win the Carabao Cup as well. Sevilla have won an all-Spanish Champions League final. This first season is wild. And Atletico Madrid take down PSG to win the Europa League final. I would have said that would be the Champions League final ahead of the other one. Meanwhile, Feyenoord are going to win an all-Dutch Conference League final. We say goodbye, though, to Ben Foster, the vlogging goalkeeper. Our fellow, uh, technically, technically, I know he's a professional footballer, but technically, he's a colleague of mine now, so... My fellow colleague, Ben Foster, but then I can also say Mr. Beast is a colleague of mine. But Ben Foster, what I'm trying to say, thank you for your service. Best of luck in retirement. But that was an absolutely wild season number one in charge of Watford. Let's crack on season number two, see what improvements we can make that maybe aren't in the back line this time. All right, season number two kicking off here with a player departure. Ignacio Puceto is headed to Spain, headed to Elche. 
6.9 million pounds in the back pocket. And Adelberto Penaranda. Does anybody remember? I swear, this guy used to be a little bit of a beast in career mode back in like FIFA 14, I want to say. He's now a mediocre footballer. I don't think that's a harsh statement to say, but we sold him for just under 2 million pounds. Meanwhile, Andre Gray is headed to Sheffield United, only selling strikers this year, it seems. We're going to change it up, though. Daniel Bachman is headed to Brentford, down back in the championship, which is what you love to see. And we make a massive mic drop statement signing here in between the sticks. Ben Foster retires. Bachman's off to Brentford, but we sign Dean Henderson, getting him some game time, rescuing him from Old Trafford and signing him for 43 million of the Queen's finest British pounds. But we're back to selling strikers. Joshua King off to Burnley. And thankfully, we're not selling this guy. We're just sending Jal Pedro on a season-long loan to Celta Vigo. Philip Zingernagel is off to Wolves. And the clean-out continues as Adam Messina is off to Benfica. It is going to be another massive addition to the midfield, though. Another French defensive midfielder signing who I plan on converting to a centre midfielder. But it is going to be Matteo Ganduzzi joining us here for 29.1 million pounds from Arsenal. There we go. Absolutely cleaning out the club here to kick off season number two. The board is loving us. The fans are loving us. And I'm loving life here at Vicarage Road. But this is how the starting lineup is now looking. Everybody growing together, which is nice to see. Henderson and Saar are the star players of the club so far. But I just want everybody to live together this season. I can definitely live with this. All I want from this rebuild and any rebuild is progress. Currently, we are 12th in the Premier League. I didn't have heaps of money to spend in this window. So I've gone and just looked for players that I can get on cheap deals for next year. And we found David Trezeguet, not David Trezeguet, just Trezeguet, the Egyptian midfielder from Aston Villa. I wish it was David Trezeguet, but... Trezeguet is going to join us on a free contract next year. If we want to sell him, at least that's a little bit of profit. You know what? I can live with that. Season number two, we remain in 12 here. That's a pickup from last year. Definitely edging ourselves closer to the top half of the table. Rome wasn't built in a day. Meanwhile, it is Manchester United beating out City on an absolute thriller to win the Premier League, whilst Burnley, Norwich, and Reading are all relegated. Arsenal take down West Brom to win the FA Cup. Man City take down Liverpool to win the Carabao Cup. Order is somewhat restored in the Champions League as a European giant in Bayern Munich are champions this year. Meanwhile, Leipzig continue the German domination as they win the Europa League. Again, even more European or German domination in Europe as Wolfsburg win the Conference League. So there we go, lads. Just building up the team a little bit more. Not as good as an end of the season as we would have hoped, but just got to keep building it. Just brick by brick into this Watford side. I want to take this side to the next level, ladies and gentlemen. Harvey Barnes is the latest addition here at Vicarage Road. Our marquee signing to kick off season number three. Harvey Barnes joining us from Leicester for 48.7 million pounds. Meanwhile, we have sent Domingos Quinoa off to Lazio on a season-long loan. Since we have signed Harvey Barnes, we no longer require the services of Manuel Dennis, so the Nigerian winger is headed to Leipzig for 24.1 mil. And our first signing at the club is officially out of the club. Adam, or Attila, I should say, Sali, is headed to Levante. Same deal here with the Chilean center half. Francisco Seralta is headed to Blackburn. We have beaten out Spezia here to get our first free agent regen signing of the rebuild. 17-year-old Argentinian center half Ignacio Jara is joining us here on a free transfer. 74 overall. Very happy with that one. And we're going to make a massive signing once again in the back line. Sven Botman, the Dutch center half, joining us here from Lille, I believe we got him from. For 42.7 million pounds, I lie, I got him from Spurs. So there we go, really making statement signings this transfer window. Barnes and Botman are going to be big additions to the team and hopefully can take us that next level. Need to start thinking about Europa League, Conference League. These sort of things need to be the goal now at Watford. Ismaili Saar, though, is really starting to grow in this rebuild. The team is getting there. Like, the majority of the side are into the 80s. I expect Christensen and Thurham to join the team this season in the 80s. But all coming along here at Vicarage Road. Let's see if we can turn things up a notch here to kick off season three. Oh my god, we have turned things up a notch. We've turned it the entire, we've broken the bloody notch. We're coming third in the Premier League. Let's hope we can keep this form going. Gonna sign a free agent player or regen player, but we're gonna sign him on a permanent transfer. This is one of the guys I wanted to sign at the opening half of the season, but we were beaten out by AZ Alkmaar. 
but we've got our man now. Unfortunately, we've had to pay 10.8 million pounds for him, which is not what he's... Val his value was not 4.3 million pounds when I was going in for him a couple minutes ago. Oh, that's annoying on paper, but I still think Eden Dierick is going to be a decent signing. So we've had a little bit of a fall off here in the second half of the season, but... We have finished in seventh, which I think means we either get Europa League or Conference League. Time will tell. Man City win the Premier League, Everton in second, but we at least we're up in a European spot, I believe. Meanwhile, at the other end of the table, it is Southampton, Sheffield United, and Middlesbrough all relegated. Crystal Palace take down QPR to win an all London FA Cup final. Liverpool take down Leeds to win the Carabao Cup. Liverpool have also won the Champions League. Fair play. Bayern Munich get back-to-back -back European honours this year, though it is the Europa League. Whilst RB Salzburg take down Braga to win the Conference League. Is Maley Saar, though, really picking it up for the team? 21 goals, 7 assists, and up to 86 overall. What a king. I really hope that our 7th place finish gets us European football. We'll soon find out, but let's go into the next chapter here here at Watford. I don't think I'll ever be satisfied with the backline we've got here, but I am signing the American wonder kid himself, Serginho Dest, is going to join us here from PSG. We signed the American right back for 53.3 million pounds. What is it with this rebuild and values going down whenever I sign a player? We're not that bad of a club, FIFA. Stop underestimating us, please. And since we're signed Serginho Dest, one of our earlier signings, Rasmus Christensen, is out of the club and off to Wolfsburg. This is exactly what I was looking to do as well when I signed Trezeguet a few years ago on a free. Didn't really have much use for him besides being a bench warmer, so I thought, let's cash in. We've got 6.7 million pounds out of thin air, essentially. I'm one of these, I mean, there's a lot of players here at Watford that I've been trying to sell since day one. Daniel Phillips falls into this category and finally after four years we've had an offer go through so many offers accepted so many times I've gotten the transfer talks and broken down the screen but Sparta Rotterdam are the lucky club to get Daniel Phillips for 1.2 mil and Imran Luza is also out of the club off to AC Milan for 40 million pounds. Jal Pedro will be joining him in Serie A as he heads to Bologna on loan. And Henry Wise is headed to Pie Face's favorite club, Plymouth Argyle. The Serie A loans continue. Jeremy and Garkia, the right back from England, headed to Fiorentina. And that is the transfer window done and dusted here to kick off season number four. I'm holding a little back here. I wanna see how we're going come January. I wanna see who we can sign. We've got a lot of money in the back pocket, but I'm just holding off and waiting until January. This is the team. So I did sell, I did sell loser, but I put Keenar into the starting lineup. So hopefully he's able to do a job for us. Henderson, Saar, Hernandez, Barnes, all killing it. Need the rest of the side to join them. But we have been placed into the Conference League this season. It's my first time that I've ever played in the Conference League in FIFA 22. So hopefully we can finally get some, like we can finally get some European football, but I'm excited to see what this is all about. 10th place is just not good enough though, lads. The goal for this season is qualify for Champions League football. That's my personal opinion, my personal goal. 10th place is just not good enough. So we are gonna go out here and make a massive signing here in the January transfer window, splashing the cash and bringing in Donny van der Beek from VFL Wolfsburg. 87.9 million pounds to sign the Dutchman. That is a massive addition. Welcome to Watford, mate. Come on, lads. The disappointing thing is we were so close to Champions League football, but fifth place in the Premier League, Europa League football next season. Liverpool win the league. If we just didn't have such a slow... I mean, 15 draws is so frustrating. We only got five losses all season. But 15 draws. West Ham have been relegated. Oh my God. West Ham, Burnley and Norwich are all relegated. Manchester City have won the FA Cup this season though. Hey, I would like to see this happen in real life. Fulham have won the Carabao Cup. Atletico Madrid win a Madrid derby in the Champions League final. Leon win the Europa League. We get our first piece of silverware in charge of Watford. Get in there, lads. We win the Conference League 2-0 over Borussia Mönchengladbach. Let's go. Oh my god hernandez i was thinking maybe i might have to consider upgrading in the next season or two he has had a dream season 89 overall plus five overall 34 goals seven assists have my children and deandre hopkins just i'm watching the nfl at the same time that i'm recording this lads deandre hopkins just scored for the mighty arizona cardinals let's go baby so season four ending on an absolute high our first club honors europa league football next year just gotta keep bumping it up and up and up
All right, we sold Loser almost a year ago, but we're finally going to make the upgrade. Nicolo Zaniolo, the Italian attacking midfielder, joining us here for 100 million pounds on the dot after the move from Rome. He's one of our earlier signings in the rebuild, but Oscar Mingueza is headed down south, headed to Brighton and Hove Albion for just over 50 mil. And we have made our upgrade at the center half spot. Fikio Timore, we've brought him. I feel like this position is just going to be a revolving door of former Barcelona players is because we've sold Mingueza, a former Barcelona player, and replaced him with Fiki Otomori, who was signed from Barcelona for 56.5 mil. Kefren Foram is also out of the club as well, lads, headed to Bayern Munich for 30 mil. Look at that. We've only sold him, what, a couple of days ago, and Bayern Munich are already trying to ship him back to us. They want, us, they want to get Harvey Barnes and get, give us back Thuram. No, no. But there we go, lads, just upgrading two massive spots in the starting 11, Zaniolo and Tomori into the club, Mingeza and Thurum out of the team. We've just taken Watford, taken the Hornets to the next level. So a little look at how the side is looking heading into season number five. Ismaili Saar has just gone to a different level. 91, like our front three is out of this universe. So unfortunately, no Champions League football this year. I thought maybe the Conference League got us into the group stages or got us into the qualifiers at least. But unfortunately, that is not the case. We are in the Europa League this season. Let's see if we can take it down in the Europa League. So of course, the goal for this season has to be, we need to get ourselves Champions League football. Finally, this is, I'm drawing the line in the sand. The Champions League needs to be coming to Vicarage Road next season regardless. We need Champions League football currently occupying fourth. I want to challenge for the title though. So we are going to sell Zven Botman here, taking the side to the next level here in the January transfer window. Don't want to rest on what we've got so far. Need to really dig it home. And that is why we are going to spend 96.3 million pounds to sign Edmund Tapsoba from a Premier League rival in Chelsea. That is a massive addition to the team. Champions League footy coming to Vicarage Road in season number six as we finish second in the Premier League here. Finish the same points as Liverpool, but goal difference gets us over. Man City, five points ahead of us. At the other end of the spectrum, however, Bournemouth, Brentford, and Swansea are all back down in the championship. Nottingham Forest have won the FA Cup. Fair play. We've lost... The Carabao Cup final to Man City on penalties. That hurt. Borussia Dortmund have won the Champions League. Meanwhile, Bayern Munich have taken down Real Sociedad in the Europa League. How did we go in the Europa League? We were eliminated in the quarterfinals by Nice. We had a... Did we... Oh, we had the lead. We had a 2-1 lead, it looks like. And they beat us 2-0 in the second leg. Whilst Benfica have taken down Atalanta to win the Conference League. Nah, this guy's insane. Hernandez has gotten 43 goals, 12 assists, and is up to 91 overall. The Colombian striker might be might be pushing Falcao to the side as the best Colombian striker in history once this video is done and dusted. I can't wait to have forgotten about some legendary Colombian striker and have all the Colombian fans in the comments going off at me. But I think Falcao is the greatest Colombian striker ever. So season five is coming to a conclusion. It has had its ups and downs, but we got Champions League football and that's all that matters at the end of the day. Let's crack on and see how we go in season six. I want to see just how strong we can make this side this year. We've gone from Conference League to Europa League and now we're in the Champions League and we're making a massive statement signing here. The Uruguayan center midfielder Federico Valverde is going to join us from Liverpool for 120 million pounds, a club record signing. We're also going to make the signing of a new backup goalkeeper as the Nigerian shortstopper Madaika Okoye is going to join us from West Ham United. And Romain Perot is going to join us as a backup left back as we sign the Frenchman from Lazio for 39.5 million pounds. This front line, all three of our frontline players are in the 90s. That is unbelievable. 93, 92, 90. Let's go lads need the defense to pick it up a little bit but i am loving this team so far they're gonna score a thousand goals this year like i said our first champions league group stage is upon us we are drawn alongside Inter Milan, Frankfurt, and Dinamo Kiev. Let's go and see if we can get out of the group. Ourselves and Inter Milan have wiped the floor in this group, and we are headed to the round of 16 at our first time of asking. Both teams getting 15 points. Frankfurt and Dinamo Kiev, 
nowhere near. But things got taken to the next level here as we face RB Leipzig in the round of 16. Good sign as well. All I want from now on is Champions League qualification season after season after season. But right now we are top of the Premier League. Three points ahead of Liverpool. All right, here we go, fellas. Champions League round of 16. The first leg at home here at Vicarage Road as we take on Leipzig. We're going to get right into it here. This scoreline in our first knockout round game is not a good scoreline in the slightest. It's a 2-1 loss. Thiago Thomas giving them the lead in the 83rd minute. And now we've got a lot of work to do as we head to Germany. Come on, lads. Heading to Germany here. 2-1 down. This is going to show us what we're really made of this season. Can we get a result under our belts and get ourselves through to the Champions League quarterfinals? A 1-0 result takes it to extra time. A 2-1 result. Like, if we win by one goal, we head to extra time. Let's simulate it against Leipzig. This scoreline is going to be... Oh, my God! 4-1! Oh, my God! We have absolutely destroyed Leipzig here. And we're headed to the quarterfinals in the best style imaginable. So I am full of confidence now after that second leg. But in the quarterfinals, we have been faced up against Leon. I, I couldn't get started in a Porto or Brighton. All right, so at home for the first leg here. Need a stronger start than we had against Leipzig in the first leg there. Need to get a result. Need to not make life difficult for us as we head to the second leg in France. But here we go, lads. At Vicarage Road. Knockout round football in the quarterfinals. This scoreline is another 2-1 loss. Are you kidding me? They score in the 80... What was it? Like the 83rd minute in the first leg against what their faces are? Oh, my God. We've made it hard for ourselves again, lads. At least we know we can come back from 2-1 down. But bloody hell, will lightning strike twice? We travel to France here. Traveling to Lyon for the second leg. You guys know the deal. Exact same thing as we had to deal with last time. As we get into it, this scoreline is going to be... Oh my god! Oh! We've won on penalties! Nah, this is ridiculous. We have won on penalties. Jensen Fernandez misses a penalty and we are headed through to the semi-finals. Please, the first leg of the semi-finals, please do not make it 2-1 again. These semi... What are these semi-finals? Porto. Liverpool makes sense, but Porto versus Liverpool, and then we're versus Brighton. Watford versus Brighton in the semi-finals here in Season 6. What? Come on, lads. We are at home. Like, this is exactly like every, every first leg we've had this season has been at home. If we get another 2-1 loss... I'm going to question reality. We're going to surely be in a simulation. Speaking of simulations, though, let's simulate the first leg. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 3-0! Come on! That's what we needed. Let's go. 3-0. Let's go. Man, I'm in such a hype mood, honestly, lads. We're 3-0 up now. All I want is no injuries, no suspensions, and surely we don't bottle this. Surely we're headed to a Champions League final. Going to simulate it straight away. And this scoreline is a 4-1 aggregate win. But Tapsova! Tapsova got a red card. And Hernandez, please don't tell me that's a suspension for Hernandez. Tapsova's out, which is a massive loss. But if we're without Hernandez as well, we're going to be up the creek without a paddle. This rebuild is delivering twists and turns at every corner. I thought for all money, Liverpool would have been in the final, but it is FC Porto versus Watford in the season six Champions League final. I love this game. Taking a look around the other competitions, however, PSG win the Europa League. Granada take down Man United to win the Conference League. We have won the Premier League title here with Watford. We finished top of the league, only four losses all season. Let's go. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the table, West Ham have come up and are going straight back down alongside Norwich and Sheffield United. Bournemouth win the FA Cup and Leicester City win the Carabao Cup. So it is now time for us to take a look at the squad report here ahead of the Champions League final. Tap so is a massive loss, but thankfully, Hernandez is going to be playing the Champions League final against Porto. This could be one of the first times I've ever versed Porto in a Champions League final, but you know what? I'm actually kind of happy that we are. It is such a nice change from the likes of versing Barcelona, Liverpool, Man City, P. Like, I don't like versing the same teams in the Champions League final every single rebuild. I mean, it makes sense. But this is a beautiful change-up. This is refreshing as... This is like when you've been on a massive run and you jump into a cold pool on a hot summer's day. This is refreshing, ladies and gentlemen. It is Porto versus Watford in the Champions League final. Let's go see if we can get the Hornets a title.
here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the Champions League final. Let's go and see if we can get the result done here with Watford Football Club. Rainbow Flick to start it off. That is not a dream start. <laughs> It's a poor pass there. Giving Porto an early opportunity. Just need to jockey. No shooting opportunities. They're passing us to death. Good save, Henderson, but it's still on here. Octavio defending. Good stuff, Sessignon. Just get rid of it, brother. Let's see if we can hit him on the counter-attack. No, they tackled us again. They go for the shot. What a save, Henderson. We need to pull our heads together. Watford have just been, or Porto, I should say, have just been all over us. They've got a corner here. They're swinging it in. Henderson, why are you not catching that one, mate? Can somebody go to it? This is so bad. They've hit the post. Oh, my God. We are getting absolutely manhandled here by Porto. Let's see if we can get something on the counter-attack here, though. Hernandez is looking for options. We've got some options through the middle as we go to Valverde. I see the options out wide. Valverde to Serginho Dest. Need to get somebody in the middle. Dest going there to Valverde. It's blocked. Going to Saar. Saar, it's blocked. It's fallen. Hernandez. There's the goal. Three deflections. We do not deserve the lead, but we are capitalizing on it nonetheless. Hernandez, the record goal scorer, gives us the lead in the Champions League final. Oh, win that. Nice. Oh, just going straight to them. We we'll need to keep defending. They've been all over us, but we need to turn the sails. Good save, Hendo. Is he going to go for a corner? No, they're going to keep it in. Oh, we've overshot the mark there as well. They put it across. It's come back out to them, blocked again. So many blocks. Zanderbeek, I see some options, but we're just going to keep running. There's the option there. Good ball. Zaniolo. Zaniolo. Valverde. We're 2-0. We've sent the keeper the wrong way. I'm telling you, lads. Low Drivens are so overpowered this year. He's just teleported, but Federico Valverde sends the keeper the wrong way, and we double our lead. Porto. Putting that one in. That's terrible. That's terrible, Jared. Such terrible defending. We had the game, I wouldn't say in control, but we had the lead. 2-0, and now it's 2-1 as I burp. Need to restore this two-goal buffer. Saar playing that one down the line there. Yeah, I see you in the middle. I see you in the middle. Hernandez, Hernandez, Hernandez. Oh, the spin. Oh, my God. Follow up. No, that would have been sick. Van der Beek. Van der Beek. Go on there, Zaniolo. Come on. Looking for it out wide. I see that targeted run. Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes. Green bean, baby. Let's go. The two-goal buffer is restored. Green time finish. That was an absolute rocket. And we are 3-1 up. This team is insane. Put the one over the top. Oh, I need to win that a little bit better. Dest. Oh, it's going straight up to Iago, though. No long shots. No long shots. They go there to have Evan. Isaac. Good save at the near post from Henderson. Come on, lads. Just need to maintain possession. If we could add a fourth goal here, that would be absolutely phenomenal. We're surely going to win the Champions League final now. Harvey Barnes. Can he do it? Oh, I tried to nestle it in there. But the referee blows the full-time whistle regardless. There we go, lads. Champions League winners with Watford Football Club. Lads, that is one of the more enjoyable rebuilds I've done in the entirety of FIFA 22. I hope you guys enjoyed today's rebuild. If you did, leave a like. Subscribe down below. A new rebuilds every Tuesday and Friday, 6 p.m. UK time. Make sure you get that one in your calendar. But it has been Jared HD here. I am out. Peace.